Hey folks, welcome back to Biscuits Total War and in today's top 10 list we have the top 10 of cavalry for Rome Total War. Now to make this list what I've decided to do is to exclude a few things. Things like elephants, chariots and also horse archers. More than likely I'll put together another top 10 list including those at a later stage. But I'm primarily just going for cavalry units in this top 10. So to make the top 10, what I've decided to do is take into a couple of facts, things like the durability of a unit, uh, the stats of a unit, the cost effectiveness of a unit, and all round kind of bonuses and extra traits that you get for a unit, plus units that I personally like to use in either CWB, 31K, or just standard uh, no rules games. These are my top 10 cavalry units that I like to use and hopefully you guys may or may not agree with me. If you don't, leave a little comment. And let's see what you guys think of this top 10 list. Okay, so let's start the list. Number 10, I'm going to put the Cataphrac Camel. Now that's going to be quite controversial because the Cataphrac Camel arguably has got some of the best stats in the game. Now, a Cataphrac Camel can beat a standard ca Cataphrac because it's on a camel. Now these camels have the scare ability, which will scare other horses. The reason why I don't quite like these units is that they're so slow and they will tire quickly. So although yes, you get them into one-to-one -one fight with any other cab, they should do really well. But first of all, you've got to get that unit into the fight. I prefer to have a faster unit that's going to be slightly cheaper and have less stats than having basically an armored tank that's going to be really, really slow. It's going to tire out and it won't be that effective until you actually get into a one-to-one -one fight. So that's the reason why I'm putting number 10, the uh, Cataphrac Camel. And I'll just show you how you know, devastating they can be if you do use them correctly. But at the end of the day, um, it's still going to be a number 10 position. I still don't really rate them that much because of just basically their cost at the end of the day. So what they can do with these Cataphrac Camels, they do have an alt attack, which is just like the standard Cataphrac. Uh, they can throw out their maces and I'll show exactly how that works in a second. So if you go in and attack, as per normal, you'll see they're running there with their little lances. Now holding down the alt button and then clicking on attack, you'll notice that the cataphracts will now pull out a little mace as you can see there. And with that mace what they can do is they can absolutely chew through any armoured unit. And you'll see in a second they should be able to absolutely destroy those cataphracts there. So I'll just triple speed it for a few moments just while we finish off this battle. And you'll see they can be quite slow, they can be quite cumbersome, but at the end of the day, as you can see, I killed 85 of their men, they only killed two of my men. It shows you how devastating that cataphract can be. But the cost and the speed, I don't think it's worth any higher than the t number 10 position on the top 10 of my uh, units for cavalry for Rome Total War. Okay, in ninth position we have Pontic Light Cav. Now Pontic Light Cav is effectively a Jav Cav unit and there's lots of factions that field Jav Cav units but I particularly like the Pontic Light Cav. I find this unit to be one of the most cost effective Jav Cav units that you can get. If you have a quick look at them, they're worth 370 denarii, their attack is 7, defense is 7, charge is 4, missile 7. Now one of those units costs 370 denarii. What I can do, I can put this onto gold attack and a bronze shield, and that's now worth 550. Now, if I go on to say it just a standard horse archer unit, that's worth 550 denarii. So, for the same amount of money, I can get this Pontic Light Cav. And horse archers, as we all know, are an absolute pain when it comes to Rome Total to War. They're fast moving, they can just basically skirmish you until you get really bored. And that's the reason why I really like Jav Cav. Jav Cav, you can put these guys into a loose formation. You can switch to Alt Attack and just basically chase down the Horse Archer units. Now, what you will happen is that, of course, you will lose a few units before we actually engage into the single fight. But what should happen is you should be able to chase this unit right into the corner of the battlefield. And once you get them into the corner, you should be able to engage into a nice single combat melee fight come on just don't mess up don't come on go and attack that's it there we go so you engage and absolutely destroy the the horse archers and we destroyed them and we still got 88 men left so 
In CWB rules, you can have up to two horse archers. So potentially, if you get two good light uh, Pontic Cav, those two um, Pontic Cav should be able to nullify the two horse archers. And then you should still have enough Cav left to go and deal with archer units and other bits of units that the enemy may have brought. So that's the reason why I really like Pontic Light Cav. And that's the reason why I really like Jav Cav. Um, also of Jav Cav, you've got skirmish mode. So if any heavy cavalry to try and chase you down things like cataphracts Batorian cav they'll never chase you down as long as you manually run your units away your units will always be faster than the heavy cav so in ninth position we have pontic light cav in eighth position we have the desert cavalry by the egyptian faction now again i absolutely love these guys these guys are so cheap just like the pontic light cav they're only 420 denarii and that means that you can actually put gold gold experience chevrons on them and effectively it's only going to cost you an extra thousand denarii now if you compare that to say a cataphract a cataphract just on gold gold is worth 1690 so these guys are so <coughs> so much cheaper and are so cost effective the other thing that's absolutely great about them they have an axe now that axe will give you an armor penetrating bonus what that means is any unit that's got heavy armor, their stats for their armor will be halved in two. And that's because you've got the axe. So with an axe, it can be absolutely devastating against things like cataphracts or Praetorian Cav, anything like that. And especially if you put these guys into the desert, they're going to be even better than that. So let's just see how they fare up against these two cataphracts. Again, these two cataphracts cost more money than my desert cav. But because my Desert Cav have got the Armoured Piercing ability, they should be able to absolutely destroy and finish off these cataphracts. And there we go. Clear victory. We killed 101 of them. They only killed 12 of us. This will work for Praetorian Cav. It will work for really expensive Cav. So if you're playing CWB or low money rules and you want to bring a unit that the opposition don't know about or they're not aware of the Armoured Piercing ability, it could be a great unit to bring to the battlefield. I really love bringing them, especially if I can destroy things like a cataphract. Another thing they're really good for is scored resolution, because scored resolution takes into account the actual cost of the unit, opposed to the unit that you're killing. So something like this, which is dirt cheap, going up against expensive cataphracts, you're going to get lots and lots of points when it comes to scored resolution. So all in all, 8th position goes to Desert Cav. Now I can't mention Desert Cav without mentioning Headhunting Maidens. So in the next position, in 7th position, we have the Scythian Headhunting Maidens. These are just like the Desert Cav, but they've got better stats. Slightly more expensive at the end of the day, but these guys have better version in the Desert Cav. You can use these guys um, anywhere and they're going to be absolutely amazing against any armoured uh, units. These guys are just gold gold and again we're going to go up against some gold gold cataphracts. Uh, the gold gold cataphracts are worth about 1600 or it might be 1900 denarii. These head hunting maidens, they're only worth 1000 denarii each. They're just dirt cheap, really really cost effective and you'll see how devastating they can be. Especially when you're going up against armoured units such as these cataphracts. Now, poor cataphracts at the moment are getting a raw deal on this top 10 list. But it just shows you how good these other units can be against them now this is a heroic victory it's a heroic victory because it's taken into account the actual stats and it's taken into effect the actual cost of my unit that Scythian unit is only worth 1000 denarii each we've killed 116 of their men they've only killed 4 of our men just shows you how devastating that unit is they are really OP to be honest and I don't know if there's any historic accuracy to the headhunting maidens but I love these guys. So in 7th position goes the Headhunting Maidens. So in 6th position we have the Macedonian Light Lancer. Again these guys just like the previous units are really cheap. 370 denarii. They come with a charge of 9 and attack of 5. Unfortunately defence is quite low. But they are really really fast. So it means that what I can do. I can get a gold gold to 3 experience chevrons. And it only costs 1,190 denarii. If I go up against the Cataphract, which is 1,690, if that's gold gold, these Cataphracts are so much more expensive than the, the Macedonian Light Lancer. But when used correctly, these Macedonian Light Lancers can really pack a punch. All you've got to do is charge in and charge out. 
Now, I love these units, especially when it comes to CWB rules or anything like that, because in CWB, often you're going to bring lots and lots of archers. And with lots and lots of archers, you need to make sure you've got a unit that can chase down these archers and also out skirmish other heavy cavalry. And that's exactly what these light lancers are able to do. They're able to outmaneuver, out skirmish, and primarily out defeat, out kill anything. So let's have a look exactly what they can do. Let's charge them straight into these cataphracts. What I'll do, I'll punch them straight through. Hopefully that should cause a bit of a rout, should cause a bit of a... Get some nice little charge there. I'm going to pull my units back out now. Make sure we get our troops well and truly away from all of these cataphracts. Now with my uh, light lancers, they have got a faster ability to outmaneuver these cataphracts. So I should be able to run all the way back before the cataphracts can chase me. So that's just how good they can be. So let's just run them all the way back, 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 and wait for these cataphracts to try and chase me down. So you can see on their first engagement, it's been fairly standard. These cataphracts will try and chase me down, which is absolutely fine. We'll keep on pushing, we'll keep on pushing. I don't know, let's say push them all the way back to over here. Try and tire out these cataphracts. And once I get into formation, I'll turn these guys around and we're going for another little charge. Let's charge straight into the back here and see what kind of damage we can do against these uh, cataphracts. So we're charging right into the back of the cataphracts. We should get a nice little uh, bonus here. Hopefully cause a bit of a rout. Hopefully kill a few of these units. There we go. Enemy general is dead. All we need to do now is just pull our units back. And as you can see, look, we've already routed two of these units already. Um, I know this is pretty about a pre-longed kind of top 10 here, but I just really wanted to show you uh, what these units can do when used correctly. So pulling back my light lances, make sure I'm keeping away from all of these cataphracts. These cataphracts are now winded. My guys, of course, are winded. But let's go in for another little charge here. In we go. Surround these cataphracts. And there we go. These guys are now starting to rout. I'm sure the other one will start to rout any time now. Let's go for these guys next. And there we go. Absolutely destroyed them. Heroic victory. We killed 407 of them. They killed 144 of my men. And it just shows you how good that Light Lancer can be. Great for chasing down units. Great for charge ability. And a heroic victory. So guys... This is why I really rate the Light Lancer, one of the best units that you can get in Rome Total War. Okay, now we reach the actual top five of my top cavalry units in Rome Total War. And in fifth position, we have the Sacred Band Cav. Now, these guys aren't really used too much when it comes to uh, 31k, but they are certainly used in CWB. Now, these guys are almost like a cheaper version of a Praetorian Cav, but are not quite as effective. Uh, but I really do rate them because at the end of the day they're really cheap. But what you can do is that going up against uh, their enemy, which is the uh, the famous Macedonian Companion Cav. Companion Cav have got a better charge at the end of the day, and they have got some better stats. But what the Sacred Bands can do is that they do have a really good ability for their alt attack. Now, what do I mean by that? Well. By using the alt attack, I can switch to their sword, and by switch, what the heck is going on there? You can switch to swords anytime now. There we go. Now, by switching to a sword attack, we should be able to beat the Macedonian cab. Even though the Macedonian cab has got better stats, it shows you how strong the sacred bands can be if used correctly. So make sure you're using that alt attack. Make sure you're using the sword and you will be able to beat the Companion Cav. And there we go, Companion Cav already, already starting to rout. It's a really rubbish um, example that I gave because the other unit failed to charge in. But there we go, clear victory. We killed 100 more men than us, even though that the Companion Cav have got better stats than us. 
I think they're slightly more expensive and I do rate companion cab above sacred bands cab but if you do use the sacred bands correctly they can be good they've got a really nice alt attack when they use their swords so there you go in fifth position sacred bands in fourth position we have a unit that's fielded by the Germans and that is called gothic cav now people get gothic cav and barbarian and noble cav mixed up gothic cav is basically a better version than barbarian and noble cav now other factions like the the Gauls they will field barbarian noble cav the Dacians they will field barbarian noble cav as you can see here and often when you see them fielded on the battlefield people might think oh they can go toe to toe with the gothic cav but the gothic cav is better it's more cost effective yes it's slightly more expensive but the gothic cav will absolutely destroy the noble cav so that's the reason why i put the gothic cav in fourth position because they're an underrated unit and often people might get them mixed up with barbarian and noble cav if they do 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 that then you're going to come quids in because you will be able to destroy anyone who attacks you so let's have a little demonstration let's use these guys up against these uh, barbarian cav just to see exactly what kind of damage they can do so this is the barbarian noble cav which is the best cav unit that both the Gauls can field and the Dacians can field but look within seconds we've already won that battle we destroyed them finished them all off we're faster moving we've got better stats and we should be able to absolutely destroy them before they can even get off the battlefield. And if you have a look at the kind of damage that we've taken, I don't think we've even lost one unit. Maybe one unit, maybe two units. Yep, there we go. We've lost three units. we destroy destroyed their entire army. It shows you how much better that Gothic Cav can be over Barbarian Cav. So in fourth position, I'm going to go for the Gothic Cav. In third position, we have one of my favourite Cav units. This is the Companion Cav. And both the Seleucids... Uh, feel this unit and the, the Macedonians feel this unit. They've got really, really nice charge bonus. Uh, one of the best charge bonuses in the game. The charge bonus is 9. And, you know, I really rate these units. What I'm going to show you as a little demonstration is the Companion Cav versus the uh, Sacred Band Cav. Now, in the earlier example, we saw them actually beating this unit. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to utilize their cav bonus charge and go straight into these units. And by using this uh, bonus here, we should be able to easily beat them. So in they go with a nice little cav charge. I'm going to now switch to alt attack. Make sure we absolutely destroy these units and put triple speed on. And then we're going to chase them down. And there we go. All done and dusted. It shows you just how good that unit can be especially if you utilize that charge so in third position i'm going to go for companion cav they're great for cwb they're great for 31k they're all around really great unit to use one of the best units to bring in rome total war for cav so heroic victory ideally what should have happened is that the uh, sacred band should have got a better amount of kills especially into the one-to-one -one melee fight but because I got in a nice early cav charge, that's the reason why we swung that victory from a clear victory to heroic victory. So Macedonian cav, one of the best cav units to bring in my opinion. So in second position, we have the Roman Praetorian cav. These guys are all round uh, contenders. They've got great defense, great attack. The only downside with them is that their charge is only six. So their charge isn't great, but you get these guys into a nice melee fight, they will easily win. So let's give you an example. Let's go and again attack these companion cav. On the last little video, you saw how devastating the companion cav can be. So let's charge in my Praetorian cav right into these units here, and let's see what we can try and do. Now, hopefully we can catch them off guard before they can do a charge on me, because that's the one way that the Macedonian cav will be able to beat me is if they get a decent charge and as you can see they haven't been able to do that and we've already been able to route one unit we're now going to switch to the other unit and absolutely devastate and destroy this companion unit all of these units again they're all non-upgraded standard units let's go to continue battle and finish off these units now unfortunately uh, they're not the fastest units on the battlefield they are pretty fast they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of units, um, but compared to things like Light Lancers 
or things like um, Jav Cav, the Praetorian Cav will never be able to chase them down. So in second position, all in all, I'm going to go for Praetorian Cav. These guys are great for CWB, they're even great for 31k, they're all around units. If you're going to bring any Cav units to Rome Total War as the Roman faction, you want to be bringing Praetorian Cav. So clear victory, we killed 196 of their men, they only killed 8 of my men, so that's just going to leave wonder what the first position could be but a second position goes to Praetorian Cav. So before I jump onto the first position what I will quickly mention is that I haven't actually put any armored general units into my top 10. Now the reason being they are really expensive and yes they can be used correctly and well in the right situation but in the standard CWB rules or 31k rules they're not going to be as cost effective as say bringing a Praetorian Cav or a Cataphrac or whatnot. Also what's really good to mention is that some of the kind of lesser units, things like the Equites, uh, things like um, if I jump onto the Light Lancers, uh, maybe even um, some of the units like the, the Barbarian uh, Cav such as, I'll quickly jump onto the German faction, uh, where are they? These guys, Barbarian Cavalry and equities tend to be the most cost effective unit so if you actually purely look at their cost and actually what you get for a barbarian cav they only cost 400 denarii but you get an attack of 10 defense of 10 and charge of 7 so arguably speaking the barbarian cav and the equities tend to be some of the most cost effective units that you can get for the cav but of course if you're going to play cwb rules if you're going to play 31k rules you know you're not going to bring a bunch of barbarian cab because you will get slaughtered at the end of the day but purely if you wanted to look at uh, cost to stats ratio those would be some of the strongest units that you can get so my first position goes to the cataphrac cataphrac are the armored tanks of the world only cost well they cost 940 they're pretty damn expensive but these guys are designed to kill we're going to go up against some praetorian cab praetorian cab i can put as a silver attack and silver defense it's going to cost them 1300 denarii my unit's 940 denarii i'm not even going to upgrade it i'll show you how devastating a cataphrac can be if used correctly now the cataphrac again has that armored piercing ability if you switch to the mace attack so my unit i'm not even gonna i'm gonna put it on triple speed it's gonna charge it straight into these units here they're gonna go in i'm gonna switch to my mace attack what will happen is the Praetorian Cav will run away they know they're going to lose the battle they're going to try and run away but it's very little they can do my unit although I've got less upgrades in fact I've got no upgrades you know I'm going to win that heroic victory Praetorian Cav should have won that on the money front their unit costs about 300 denarii extra to mine but that just shows you how devastating a cataphract can be if you get your charge in right, if you charge straight into infantry units, it will decimate most units. Of course, unfortunately, because the Cataphrac is a heavily armoured unit, it's going to be vulnerable against things like the Headhunting Maidens or um, Desert Cav. It's also going to be vulnerable doing long, long charges because they will tire out. And because they tire out, it will take even longer for them to regain their energy levels. So you need to make sure you time your charges right, you make sure you pick the right fight, but at the end of the day, these cataphracts are the best cab units, in my opinion, that you can bring in Rome Total War for both CWB and 31K. So, first position, I'm going to go for cataphracts. So, at the end of the day, guys, let me know what you think. I know it's a bit of a, um, a weird list, but just to recap, in 10th position, we had the cataphract camel, then we had the jav cav, desert cav, followed by headhunting maidens, followed by light lances, followed by Sacred Bands Cav, followed by Gothic Cav, followed by Companion Cav, followed by Praetorian Cav, and last but not least, the Cataphrag, which both the Saluted have, both the Armenians have, and the Parthians have. So leave a little comment. I want to know what you think of this top 10. Of course, I'm going to bring you more top 10 in the near future. I'm going to look at archers. I'm going to look at other things like chariots and whatnot. But guys, let me know what you think. If you disagree, put your list. I want to know what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys soon for the next top 10 on Biscuits Total War. All the best and thanks for watching.
Bye now.